like 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you, Caught. Deep state leader spying on Trump campaign, he's the one that's been directing traffic while deflecting rumors of involvement. The fake news industrial complex keeps on walking on with its Russia agitation. The Washington Post specifically is completely powered by an obsession with the Russians, its topic including so unmistakably in its announcing as to Virgin Zeal. At the present time, its essential target is Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The WAPO prepared this agitation with a couple of all-around situated pieces on how Trump and his guides were trying things out on replacing Sessions with Giuliani. The truth of the matter is that this story was the seed and the forthcoming story of arrangement amongst Sessions and the Russians was to be the nurturing water to the paranoid fear. Since they've neglected to get a dependable balance, it's presently up to Mueller and the deep state to keep leaking goodies of data increased through illicitly gotten unmasked NSA metadata. With the admission of significantly all the more condemning data that these discussions amongst Sessions and Russian agents were recorded, it appears to be far-fetched that the Republicans should burrow exceptionally far before reaching one stunning decision about who is behind this unmasking outrage, Barack Hussein Obama. Via the Gateway Pundit, Fake News WAPO dropped another deep state leak Friday afternoon to squeeze up the Russian hysteria as they claim AG Jeff Sessions spoke to a Russian envoy twice during the 2016 presidential elections. Russian envoy Sergei Kislyak's accounts of two conversations with Jeff Sessions, who was at the time a senator from Alabama, were intercepted by U.S. spy agencies, according to WAPO. This is just another proof that Obama was spying on and unmasking GOP lawmakers during the 2016 presidential election. According to the Washington Post, a Russian ambassador to Washington told his superiors in Moscow that he discussed issues related to the campaign including policy issues important to Moscow, with Jeff Sessions during the 2016 presidential race, contrary to public assertions by the embattled attorney general, according to two current and former U.S. officials. Ambassador Sergei Kislyak's accounts of two conversations with Sessions, then a top foreign policy advisor to Republican candidate Donald Trump, were intercepted by U.S. spy agencies which monitor communications of senior Russian officials both in the United States and in Russia. Sessions initially failed to disclose his contacts with Kislyak and then said that the meetings were not about the Trump campaign. As TGP previously reported, the Attorney General Jeff Sessions addressed the Senate Intelligence Committee on June. Sessions told the committee that any claims that he was involved with Russia in the campaign was appalling and detestable lie. The Washington Post is unfortunate. They are demonstrating how implanted they are in the Democrat slave trade by jousting with the Trump staff members over an issue that ought to be a prosecution of the Obama organization. Over and over again, these fake news outlets are so centered around Trump hurling a bit of paper out the auto window when the Obama organization was dumping poisonous waste into the Potomac. On the off chance that an appropriate and genuine examination ever gets in progress in reference to this unmasking scandal. It's presumable that toadies will get the fault. Which makes one wonder, if Obama presently can't seem to do anything incorrectly, how horrible of a president would he say he was that almost every one of the general population under his organization carried out violations without him ever notwithstanding taking note? Goes against rationale. Or credibility. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. The Gateway Pentagon just drops shocking announcement. They will not pay for. Donald Trump simply demonstrated to the world why government officials ought to be effective business people, on the grounds that businessmen have common sense. The reality is, most conservatives' answers for government issues aren't convoluted. They're way off the mark. The virtuoso of the right and the incompetence of the left, ordinarily boils down to one thing, encounter living and working in this present reality. Since nothing gives you good judgment like working a genuine occupation, owning a real business, or battling a real war. Which conveys me to the present exquisite conservative's answer for an administration issue, are your wartime partners doing their offer of the work? If not, 
simply don't pay them. Which is the reason Pakistan is currently short some $50 million. Via MSN, the Pentagon will retain the remaining $50 million in military reimbursements to Pakistan for 2016 after the U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis told Congress that Islamabad had not taken enough action against the Hakkani network. More or less, the U.S. government pays different nations who enable us to discover and execute radical terrorist groups. Furthermore, the Hakkani Organize is one of those groups. Pakistan, nonetheless, truly wouldn't like to dispose of this specific group. Furthermore, there's a motivation behind why, the United States in 2012 has designated Pakistan-based Hakkani Network as a terrorist organization. The year before, U.S. Navy Admiral Mike Mullen, then the top U.S. military officer caused a stir when he told Congress that the Hakkani Network was a real arm of the Pakistan's spy agency, the Inter-Services Intelligence Directorate. There we go. Pakistan, to put it plainly, has been keeping an eye on and affecting its neighbor Afghanistan, and utilizing the Hakkani system to do it. In any case, utilizing fear-based oppressors to enable you to spy isn't awesome for you in case you should be executing the terrorists. What's more, Trump's answer? Straightforward, and professional. If you don't work, you don't get paid. Furthermore, $50 million is no little lump of progress for a country like Pakistan. The Pakistani government, in genuine liberal design, has said that they married the cash in any case. Evidently just making a large portion of a showing with regards to is sufficient for the left. Pakistan argues that it has done a great deal to help the United States track down the terrorists. Unfortunately, people, doing a great deal isn't the same as adhering to the deal. Also. That arrangement is straightforward, you don't work, you don't get paid. Common sense. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. M. Liberal California New Low. Look who California is suing for $54 billion, this is insane. On numerous occasions, we are stunned at the idiocy of California officials. In any case, they continue getting more ridiculous. It's an unexpected that any America adoring native still lives in that state. Their leaders keep on showing the amount they despise our nation and the standards of a free market private capitalism. Their most recent plan is another case of their corruption. Via Daily Caller, three California counties sued 37 of the world's largest oil and coal companies Monday for damages associated with global warming-induced sea level rise. Marin County, San Mateo County and Imperial Beach filed separate, but virtually identical, lawsuits claiming that oil companies bear responsibility for the sea level rise harming in the coastal counties. County lawyers claim that flooding is more frequent and the beaches are eroding more rapidly. The counties want reimbursement for current and future financial losses from sea level rise, in addition to punitive damages. The plaintiffs do not set a specific number for damages, but estimate they will need a minimum of $54 billion in the coming decades. In order to prove their case, the counties will have to find a specific connection between harm from global warming and the actions of each energy company. Additionally, they will have to show that the issue cannot be handled by government regulations. Which they'll never have the capacity to demonstrate. Climate alarmists keep on claiming the earth is getting hotter. Yet, in spite of alleged diagrams and charts recommending this, they can't demonstrate it is the consequence of man-made industries. How might you demonstrate that oil and coal organizations are adding to climate change? How might you even demonstrate the sea levels are rising? Climate alarmists and California administrators, are referring to defective data from motion pictures and exposed investigations to push their cases. It's difficult to demonstrate viable that these industries are causing an earthwide temperature boost or rising ocean levels. These claims are a sham. A misuse of citizen cash and the court's chance. Yet, that has never halted the cerebrum dead liberals of California sometime recently. They will push this issue even to the detriment of American occupations, lives, and prosperity. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading.
H T the Daily Caller. Three Republicans just stabbed Americans who voted for them in the back. You won't believe who they are. The Democrats and Congress have done their absolute best to hinder any advance that President Trump has wanted for the nation. Furthermore, they've been massively effective at it. Be that as it may, they had offer assistance. The reality is, the teams can't close down Trump without anyone else's input. They essentially don't have the numbers. Republicans claim the House, the Senate, and the presidency. In principle, they can do whatever they need, at whatever point they need. Also, the Democrats couldn't do a thing to stop them. Which implies, if any of Trump's designs come up short, it's not quite recently the Democrats blame, it's Republicans, as well. Furthermore, there are three species that are wrecking any possibility we need to settle our human services system. Vibriet Bart, pro-abortion liberal Republican sends. Susan Collins, me, Lisa Murkowski, Ugh, and Shelley Moore Capito, WV, say they will not vote in favor of an Obamacare repeal bill. That decision puts the effort to both repeal Obamacare and defunct Planned Parenthood out of reach for the Republican Party. Remember that what these ladies are declining to vote in favor of is precisely what Trump and Republicans have guaranteed America for quite a long time, repealing Obamacare, and closure cash for premature births. And every one of the three of these ladies made that same promise. We know this. Since they as of now voted for cancel. Thing is, they did it a while back when Obama was still in office. When he'd veto it. What's more? when their votes would make any difference by any stretch of the imagination. In the 2015 Obamacare repeal bill, which passed both the House and the Senate, Collins and Murkowski, voted, to remove the bill's provision to eliminate much of the Planned Parenthood's federal funding. Cajito kept her promise to her constituents to repeal Obamacare by voting in favor of the 2015 repeal bill, well aware that Obama would veto it. Now with a Republican in the White House who will actually sign the bill to repeal the disastrous health care reform, she said in a statement that her opposition to the repeal just two years later is based on the concerns and needs of the West Virginians. To put it plainly, she voted only for a peer. It was every one of the demonstration. What's more, that goes for every one of the three Congresswomen. McConnell and other two Republicans are endeavoring to ensure the repeal vote still passes. Be that as it may, the standpoint is inauspicious. Is it any ask why Trump supporters don't confide in Beltway Republicans? What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Briet The silence is broken. FBI and State Department just drop email bombshell on Hillary, she is in panic mode. Judicial Watch is an open entry GUA office that is imminent for recording Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, claims to access government archives that regularly implicate open authorities. With regards to Hillary Clinton and her partners, seeking after such cases must be an all day work for various staff lawyers and who knows what number of support staff. Such is the greatness of her corruption and the paper trail that must exist. In yet one more triumph for Judicial Watch, they are going to get their hands on a bit of Hillary's notorious messages that some way or another made it to Huma Abden's repelled spouse Anthony Weiner's portable workstation. Indeed, the court has requested that the FBI turn over around 7,000 such messages to the State Department for ensuring sending to Judicial Watch. As Judicial Watch keeps on pursuing this issue it is as yet workable for Hillary to end up in a bad position, somewhat to leak arranged materials to private people. The FBI has turned over 7,000 new documents from Anthony Weiner's private laptop to the State Department as part of a watchdog group's lawsuit related to last year's Hillary Clinton email case. Judicial Watch and State Department representatives appeared in a federal court in Washington, D.C., on Thursday over the group's Freedom of Information Act suit seeking Clinton emails from her tenure at the State Department. It emerged during the hearing that 7,000 new documents were turned over. The trove is expected to contain some emails sent by Weiner's estranged wife, Clinton Huma Aben. We know the entire cluster of them are screwy. 
What stays to be seen is if Hillary will ever stand trial for her bunch of affirmed wrongdoings. Some portion of the issue is that the quantity of records, including these 7,000, is huge to the point that at the present preparing rate, it will take years for every one of them to be turned over. The State Department was ordered in November to turn over 500 pages of Clinton-related documents a month to Judicial Watch. But Fitton is not satisfied with the speed of the process, especially now that another 7,000 documents are added to the pile. This pushes this out until 2020 and beyond, Fitton told Fox News after the hearing Thursday. Production is slow because the legal counsel is a holdover from the Obama administration. The people who are responsible for slow rolling this are still here. This all sounds kind of Clinton-esque, isn't that right? Run out the clock until the point that an alternate organization is in control, or some statue of constrained counteracts indictment, or on the grounds that individuals get exhausted with it all. At that point, the entire thing just gets dropped. In any event, we're very certain that is one of Hillary's expectations. Maybe the forceful lawyers at Judicial Watch will safeguard that this argument against Hillary doesn't simply decay and vanish from the national awareness. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Fox News